Well, welcome everyone to our first fall 2020 whiteboard lecture for ME3228. And uh, today we're going to focus primarily on beam deflections and why they are important and the need for considering beam deflections. And we will look at the needs, then we will look at standards for limits of beam deflection, what those might represent. And then also we'll talk about, of course, we'll begin to get into the general principles and definitions of terms associated with deflections. And then, of course, methods of analyzing beam deflections will also be discussed. And then, uh, you know, some sample problems. So, uh, along with that, uh, eventually today or this weekend, I will issue some uh, handouts or sort of some scans that I've done that will help uh, in your understanding of uh, beam deflections. So, let's go ahead and get started. And this first first board is all about the need for considering beam deflections. Now, um, you know, in, in your solids class, it was it was most of the time you were you were designing for structural stress applications, uh, trying to find what the maximum stress was, uh, so that you could then take that value and compare it to some materials value of that same property. So it was always usually a strength, you know, uh, sigma max, designing the sigma max for either plastic deflection uh, uh, or, or deformation or elastic deformation. Usually on structural applications, uh, we, we design for, you know, up to the elastic limit, uh, the elastic stress limit. So usually, again, we were designing for strength categories uh, but but many many times um, the need to understand and the need to look at the beam deflection as a first criteria or the prime uh, reason for uh, looking at an application structural application is is in is in the uh, beam deflection that is a limiting factor for many 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 designs um, in mechanical engineering associated with different types of, of plastics, I mean different types of, of uh, materials and different uh, applications. So deflections is something uh, you need to uh, try to uh, grasp and understand uh, the logic behind them. So let's look at some, some areas within, within our field uh, of mechanical engineering that uh, have issues with, with deflection. And many times, again, this is going to be the pri primary uh, design criteria would be deflection and the first ones is machining processes I mean we have so many different uh, machines machine tools uh, that make so much so many items uh, that uh, is extremely necessary that uh, we have have the the, the, the the shafts the spin what we call the machine tool spindles uh, the machine tool spindles basically is what what carries either the part itself, like on a turning operation, it would it would carry the part that's being machined, or on milling operations, it would actually carry the uh, the cutting tool. Uh, so the spindles have to be extremely rigid so that either the part will not move when the machining process starts, or that the tool will not deflect. Uh, because obviously that would affect the accuracy of whatever part they were trying to machine. And machining is strictly a material removal process. So lots of, lots of uh, deflection applications within the machining processes themselves. Now also, uh, precision measuring equipment slash instruments. Uh, talk a little bit about um, what that's about and... and Metrology, which I'll get to in, in, in the next board here, but metrology is a scientific study of measurements. And so you can imagine if you're trying to precisely measure something for accuracy and precision, uh, that you want everything 
and that instrument or that piece of equipment to be extremely rigid. You don't want any kind of variation, any kind of, of uh, deflection. So rigidity in these type of applications for these type of uh, devices is, is, is the key here. Now, uh, power transmission shafts also, that's near and dear to our heart, because normally we're, tr we're, that's what we do for a living, basically, is transmitting power from one source to another. And we do that through shafts. And these shafts transmit the power through from one shaft to another, uh, tr primarily through, through gears and a wide variety of types of gears. And so it's, in, it's inherent that the gear teeth must mesh properly, all right? The mating of those two gear teeth have to be perfect, all right, within, within, the, within having the same diametral pitch for each one of those, the pinion and the gear. And so gear teeth meshing properly is extremely important for any kind of power transmission device using shafts, which is mainly that's what we use. And as an example here, spur gears, general standard spur gears, uh, have a recommended movement between the gears of less than or equal to five thousandths of an inch now i have i know you you really don't have comprehend what five thousandths of an inch is because it sounds awfully awfully small and i'll show you some specifics of that on the next board of what that what that really looks like but what that basically means is that it equals to the sum of the movement between those two shafts can only be five thousandths of an inch in order to have proper alignment we do not want misalignment of course uh, because anytime we start having misalignment, then we start having fluctuations in the forces acting through those two, the, the pinion gear and the gear tooth profiles. And ultimately it leads to something really bad, heat. All right, And heat can eventually destroy uh, these mechanical elements like in the gears. Metallurgically speaking, too much heat uh, can literally destroy the properties and change and alter the properties uh, of those um, uh, machine uh, mechanical elements. So, so power transmission of shafts and deflection is very, very, very uh, uh, key uh, so that we eliminate any kind of deflection in those shafts that would result in a misalignment of the gears or any kind of, 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 uh, of uh, apparatus like you know alignment of that uh, as far as tooth belts or anything like that so okay uh, and then in the area of frames frames for vehicles metal forming machines automation devices to think of all these automation devices that are out there you know you cannot afford to have any kind of misalignment or deflection in something when you're completely automating something back and forth back and forth back and forth uh, they, they can't they, they, it's not allowable all right and same thing in processing equipment so again it's back to this rigidity sufficient rigidity uh, is necessary to ensure the satisfactory operation so again you would be you would be designed you would be designing when you're looking at things like this you'd be designing for for deflection uh, allowables and limits now as a result of some of this we're going to have vibrations and vibrations of course as you well know are caused by uh, forced oscillations of parts of a machine or some of the structure uh, and the vibrations can be solved by either increasing or decreasing the stiffness of that part. Now, stiffness is a significant design property for, for materials, and we're going to go through that in detail. And, of course, stiffness relates to the modulus of elasticity. Um, and we're actually going to talk about an overall beam stiffness <coughs> factor uh, later on, uh, maybe not in these two first uh, boards, but but eventually we'll talk about the overall uh, beam stiffness factor involved in all of this. So, bottom line here is that in all of these cases that we've talked about here, there uh, an understanding of how to compute deflection of beams is significantly important, very important. Um, and we'll go through some of those methods and concentrate on one particular method, which is the most widely used method in industry. Uh, but it is the engineer, you, 
or the designer's responsibility is to specify the maximum allowable deflection for a beam in a machine, in a frame, in an instrument, or a structure. Okay? So knowledge of the application usually should give you some kind of a guidance. In other words, if, if you've done this before or you've had a similar situation where you're doing something similar to that, you know, that's going to kind of guide you to what kind of a allowance you might have uh, for or a tolerancing for deflection, what might be allowable, what might not be allowable. However, uh, you know, when you're just getting into this field, uh, that's not going to be there. So you're going to have to look at some standards uh, for limits um, of deflection, allowables we might call them. So let me remove this board and we'll move on to the next whiteboard by the magic of pre-writing of the boards. And let me align this to the camera so we get it all in. There's no. I know there's a uh, a light reflection on this, but kind of hard to get rid of that. Um, and I'll have to move the board down a little bit when I get to the bottom. But essentially, um, this is board number two uh, for this coverage of deflection. Now. So here are some recommended deflection limits. Now, uh, if you remember back from solids, and we'll go over this in more detail when we start defining terms, but, but deflection is usually determined or, or used the, the, the symbol Y, lowercase y, and usually what we're looking for is Y max, the maximum deflection. And uh, so here are three general recommendations here uh, for, for deflection limits. So if you're having just a general application, a general machine part, uh, the Y max can go from, this is five ten thousandths of an inch to three thousandths of an inch. Uh, and this is inch per inch of beam length. All right. Moderate precision, it starts to get tighter and tighter. Uh, and this is, this is point zero 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 one uh, to five ten thousandths of an inch okay so these are extremely extremely small and again that's what is necessary for to make something very with a high amount of precision in it and speaking of high precision here it is and this number I you know you just gonna have to really can't get into the, the how you would say that necessarily uh, um, everything is fine for thousands, but we'll talk about that here in a second. But this is point zero 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 zero. That's five zeros, and then one, up to this point zero 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 one, which is right here. Okay. Again, this is very high precision, and you would you would require that, of course, in a, in most of those uh, measuring tools or measuring instruments. Uh, but this this these recommendations can also be expressed as a ratio. Of the maximum deflection to the length of the beam. All right. So, for instance, uh, y max, y max per uh, over the length, basically, uh, is is back to this this five ten thousandths to three thousandths for general machine parts, and then it's just the same thing for the for the uh, moderate and for the high precision. It's just a function, a ratio between the the maximum deflection and the length. So that's what the ratio they're talking about here. So an example might be if you have an 18 inch beam on some kind of general purpose machine like for instance a conveyor, uh, the lower end of that range, the recommended deflection, would simply be that five thousandths, okay, which is right here, this five, five ten thousandths right here, per inch of length of beam. And since it's an 18 inch beam, you just multiply this 5 ten thousandths times 18, and you get 0 0.009 or 9 thousandths of an inch. I'm going to show you what 9 thousandths of an inch looks like. Um, right here is what we call a feeler gauge. And, uh, you know, when you're trying to adjust your, your points, etc., uh, this is 9 thousandths of an inch right here. This, this little flexible feeler gauge right here is 9 thousandths of an inch. Uh, this is 
this let me show you this one this is two thousandths of an inch you know very 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 thin all right and you don't want to bend too much because it might deflect and be in plastic uh deformation but but at any rate so this is nine thousandths of an inch um on this feeler gauge so not very much okay now that's the that's the lower end of the range now now if it doesn't adversely affect the operation necessarily and again you would have to make that call uh, the higher end of that range you would use the higher end of this which is the three thousandths of an inch per inch of length so that'd be three thousand times eighteen thousand which is fifty four thousandths of an inch now fifty four thousandths is very close to one sixteenth of an inch which is point zero six two five all right so there's a big difference there uh, between a sixteenth of an inch and which you can measure that on a regular scale here okay each one of these little increments here is sixteenth of an inch as opposed to trying you, you know no way and no way you could measure you know the nine thousandths on a scale but you can with this or you can measure it with a wonderful micrometer and that's what these are for and you might ask well you know I'm really having a hard time deciphering what nine thousandths of an inch is well plain piece of paper you slide it in between these two jaws all right and you turn this let me hold this properly and you turn this until you get some offer some resistance right about there and if you read this thing it's going to read right at about five thousandths of an inch now I know you can't probably see that but it reads according to this about five thousandths of an inch for a standard piece of paper so that kind of gives you an idea what we're talking about here as far as these allowables and these ranges okay so um, now let me give you some other some, while, while we're on the subject of recommended deflection let me give you one other uh, basic standard and you might, might have already gone through this in your solids class but but the American Institute of Steel Construction AISC has put out and has always had this this definition for Y max that must not exceed usually it's one three sixtieth of the span of that beam okay that's for standard and there goes the timer uh, that's the that's the standard for any kind of a beam within a structural application for instance like a, a building or something uh, that deflection should not exceed one three sixtieth of the span all right just something you might keep in mind uh, which is going to be obviously different from something like what we're talking about machine elements up here but back to the science the scientific study of measurement which we call metrology not metallurgy uh, not meteorology but metrology uh, engineers talk in thousands of an inch and so if you if you're not accustomed to this let's learn how to do that but so here's our five thousandths of an inch, 0 0.0005, uh, and we call that five thousandths. And if it's 0 0.05, then that's we refer to that as fifty thousandths. And then if it's 0 0.5, then that's five hundred thousandths. Or in, 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 you know, comparing it to this one sixteenth, that's half an inch. All right. So that's how engineers talk, dimensionally speaking. From metal, from a metrology standpoint, that's how we refer to dimensions and, uh, and values on on machine parts in thousands of an inch. So, there you have it. So we will uh, uh, turn this uh, off for now, and then we'll start another series here in just a little bit.